So let's talk about JSON. What is JSON and how does JSON work? Maybe there is some kind of Wikipedia. JSON wiki. Uh, okay. Here is an example. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a way to um, convert data, especially JavaScript data, into strings, into text. And it goes like this. Um, every object starts with a curly and ends with a um, curly bracket. And uh, it has always a tuple of um, entries separated by a comma. So it's the first entry, it's the second entry, it's the third entry, and so on. Fourth entry, sixth one. So every time you see like something like that, it's one entry. And we, um, the, well, every entry is essentially a tuple, and we divide this tuple into the key and the value. On the left side we have the key, on the right side we have a value. Here um, the keys are in green, except null, and the values are red. Okay, so what is a key? A key is essentially a string, and it always starts with uh, quotation, ends with quotation. And a value can be any kind of a data type. So what is a data type? A data type is a way for us to tell the machine what the bits and bytes mean. Are the sequence of zeros and ones, is it an image or is it a number? Or is it a string? Is it a Boolean value? Um, so we need to know what kind of data we have so we can um, store the information more efficiently. Okay, and the data type, we have just a few data types. Uh, there are numbers. A number is just something like that. No, no quotation, just uh, a number like you would write it down. Then we have a string. Oops, uh, a string. It's always with a double quotation. And well, escaping is not very really interesting for us right now. A boolean. A boolean is always true or false here in this case this one is not a string even though it looks similar uh, it has no quotation so it's not a string it's a boolean and the only valid values are true or false for a boolean this one is a string even if i write true inside this to quotation it's not a boolean it's a string um, another data type is Null, let's go with that. It basically means uh, there's an empty value. And then we have arrays and objects. An array is an ordered list. It, had, it can have zero values or um, any number of values with any type. And an object is the same thing as uh, this whole thing. It has key and values, and the value itself can be any other data type. So let's let's take a look at address. Address the key is address, and the value of address is an object. The first entry of this address object is this tuple. And the key of this tuple is a street address, is a string, and uh, the value is a string as well. And there we go. Um, the phone numbers, the value of the phone numbers is 
uh, an array. And the first element in this array is an object. The second one is an object and they have to be separated by a comma. And the first uh, entry of the first object of the phone numbers um, is the type and the home uh, tuple. And the second one is the number and the string tuple. And here we have, for example, an empty, uh, an empty array. So if you're not familiar with JSON, you might take a deeper look in it, or maybe watch one or two um, YouTube videos. It's quite important to understand uh, this concept, otherwise you will be struggling with data manipulation in AppGyver. All right, so um, now we talked about JSON. And the next thing what we need to do is let's use JSON box without AppGyver just by sending commands in Postman. We use JSON box to create an object storage and create and list um, objects in it. Then we looked a little bit at the API and talked about what JSON is and how to use JSON how to read it and um, what a REST API is essentially. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to simulate the meeting apps just by using Postman. Okay, so for that Let's go back at the notes and here I have some example data. So this is a JSON object and this represents a single meeting. This meeting has a name, a description, an owner and the owner, well the value of this owner is some kind of an ID. There's a special kind of ID. It's called UUID and mm, it's, it's essentially a long string which will be evaluated to a number but in our case it's just uh, treated like a number or a string and it has a starts at key and the value of it is when does the meeting starts a location and a feedback array and in this array every user well every other user and the owner itself as well can um, give a rating between well it can it can give a rating plus one minus one or zero how on how effective this meeting was and also can leave a text some kind of a feedback or a note um, to share about the, about the meeting itself. So this is the data all we need for building our app. Okay, so the next part is we're going to create a new storage. There we are. Let's copy that. And we will replace our URL from before with the new one. Let's do a get request and we are getting an empty array. Okay, so one problem is in this scenario that anyone with the address could post or delete elements, what we, what we don't want. And JSONBox gives us the ability to put a constraint on who can uh, change data. And this constraint is realized via an API a key. So they call it a protected box and um, from the documentation we can read a protected box is similar to a regular box but you need an MP API key to create, update 
delete. Reading records is open and does not need API key. Pass the API key using the x-api-key HTTP header. So it's one of those things we uh, talked about that um, uh, HTTP request always has a header. And similar to a JSON, a header has different key and value uh, tuples. Okay, and how do we actually get one of those uh, API keys? Here you can read that um, you create a protected box by pushing your first record to a new box with an API key. So uh, the first time we create something, we need to, um, well, to put some kind of API key um, there as well. And then the API key will be registered um, by the server. So let's just do that. Let's copy that to the next step. Here we want to do a post request to create something. Um, let's just take a look at the data. It's a raw text and uh, in the JSON format. So the data is being written down here. Okay, let's copy that. Put it in the text area. Okay, so yeah. This is some kind of example data in our case. It has a name, it has a description, an owner, um, Okay, so if we would send uh, this data, then a new entry would be generated. Um, but before we do that, we need to assign an API key. And we can do that by going on the authorization uh, tab. And then and the authorization tab is essentially a subset of whatever is written in the header, similar to when I select a JSON here, the header for the request automatically updated the content type to application JSON. If I change it here, for example, to HTML, here the content type would change to HTML. So this is um, a shortcut or a convenience method for setting the header um, entries. The same is true for the authorization tab. What we need to do is select API key. And here I have an example. Okay. Let's go with that. You can actually choose any key you want. Maybe we change it a little bit. Let's say something like that. Okay, if you go to the header, then you would see that here we have a key called x-api-key and here's the value. So this is just a different uh, way to write it down as it is here. Okay, let's uh, send this data. All right, we get a status 200, which means okay, everything went fine. It took 400 milliseconds and the size is uh, around one kilobyte and this is the entry so if we do now a get we will get that and what we cannot do is we cannot um, push new data without an authorization code uh, with the authorization API key so for example if I deselect that and here uh, I do not have the API key. Uh, and I want to create, for example, a scrum meeting number two. Similar data. I go and send. Invalid. I need to enable the API key. Okay, so what we did is we tested the read. We tested the update. Let's test the 
read a single entry um, operation. So right now with the get request what I can do is read and read an array. So this is one entry and if there would be another one um, they will both show up. But let's say I just uh, I do only want to read one entry. Um, okay let's make a new tab for this one as well. Get and this one works like uh, we have to put the ID of this entry with a slash separated after the uh, prefix. And here you will see that uh, the return value will be an object, while this one has an array as an object, uh, well, as the return value. And within this array, we have these different objects. Okay, so both both get operations, the create operation, the update operation, it's done via put. So let's copy that as well. And it goes like this, the base URL, and then the ID of the record you want to update. And here we uh, have only full updates. So what's not supported is to update, let's say only the name, but it will just replace everything you write down. So, okay, let's try it out. I'm just, I just want to update. Uh, it has to go as JSON as well. I just want to update the name. Let's put it, let's say, Scrum 100. Right, no API. Key, now let's do it again. Record updated. So now let's read it. There we are. It uh, deleted everything else except the name. And that's not something we want. So let's just copy the old record from the history back to body, send, updated. If we read it again, there we are. All right, let's create a second one on the post. This time we have it maybe a month later. So we created the second one. If we um, take a list, a look at the whole list, we have two entries. Entry two, entry one. Oh, maybe two here, one there. Okay. And each one of those has a different ID. Let's say we want to delete this one. Okay. Mm. Okay. Maybe we should create a new tab for that one. Go here, delete old ID. Now let's take a look at this ID. Copy, like that. So it goes similar to the uh, put request. We have the base ID and then we have the ID of the record we want to delete. And uh, for this one, we do not need to send any body, anything in a body. But still, we need the authorization uh, API. Otherwise, it will not work. So we can sign it. There we are. Record removed. So if we take a look at um, the whole collection. Yeah, that's it. So we did every uh, operation what we wanted just by using Postman. Uh, we learned about how to use the HTTP request and how to use the REST API um, and are ready to connect it now with AppGyver.